leave the main floor of the chambers. There is additional seating upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. Good afternoon. The stated meeting for April 9th, 2019 of the New York City Council will come to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Here. Cornegie. Deutsch. Here. Yeah. Diaz. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Gibson. I'm here. Jonai. Present. Grudenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Present. Ku. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Lander, Levin, Levine, here, Mizell, Menchaca, Presente, Miller, Present, Moya, Perkins, here, Powers, here, Reynoso, Richards, Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Moya. <clears throat> Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Valone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. Uh, we will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Pastor Frederick Crawford of Union Grove Missionary Baptist Church, which is located at 1488 Ho Avenue in the Bronx. Will you bow your head as we pray? Father, I thank you for all who have gathered here today. I thank you for our elected officials who have come to handle the business of our city. I pray that you will bless the agenda that is set before them, that it will be fruitful for all mankind and womankind. Help us to make the best of our time here today. Bless each and every council member as they continue to serve us Thank you for our public advocate and all who gather. Let this meeting be conducted in harmony, even when there's disharmony. Thank you for your many and wonderful blessings. In the name we pray, amen. Thank you, Pastor.
Crawford, I ask uh, Councilmember Salamanca to spread the invocation on the record. Thank you, uh, Mr. Public Advocate. Um, we'd like to welcome uh, Reverend Frederick Crawford uh, to the City Council. Uh, Reverend Crawford is a native of the Bronx. He is the oldest of four children born to Reverend Dr. Fletcher and Mother Crawford. Having served for 12 years, he is the third generation of pastors of Union Grove Missionary Baptist Church. His father, Dr. Fletcher Crawford, served for 50 years, and his grandfather, Reverend Jeremiah Crawford, was the organizer of Union Grove Missionary Baptist Church. Prior to his leadership at Union Grove, Reverend Frederick Crawford pastored the first Calvary Baptist Church in Harlem for 20 years. Upon Dr. Fletcher Crawford's retirement, Reverend Crawford was installed as pastor at Union Grove on August 20th, 2006. Pastor Crawford is happily married to First Lady Crawford, and they share four children together. Thank you again for being here. Thank you, thank you, Council Member. Adoption of minutes. A motion that the minutes of stated meeting of February 28th, 2019, be adopted as printed. Thank you, Councilman Miller. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups? None. We'll now have communication from the speaker. Uh, thank you, public advocate. Uh, great to see you again up in that great chair. Uh, good afternoon, I want to thank you all for being here with us on this Tuesday. We have a busy agenda ahead of us. <clears throat> before we begin, before we begin, I'd like to remember some of those who have passed in the week since our last stated meeting. Last week, three retired FDNY members who had 9-11 related illnesses, died within 48 hours of each other. Timothy O'Neill, a retired FDNY lieutenant, Kevin Lennon, a firefighter, and Michael Andrecci, a fire marshal. Our thoughts and prayers are with these brave New Yorkers' families, friends, and the entire fire department. The FDNY suffered another loss this week when Christopher Slutman, a 15-year veteran of the department, was among four Americans killed by a roadside bomb near U.S. base in Afghanistan. Our hearts are with Christopher's spouse, his children, and the entire FDNY. And finally, yesterday, in Midtown Manhattan, Nelson Salinas, a construction worker, succumbed to injuries following a scaffolding collapse. Our prayers and thoughts are with him and his family during this horrible time. Now I ask that we all rise and take a moment of silence in honor of those that we lost. Thank you. I also want to acknowledge today is Council Member Donovan Richards' birthday. So happy, <clears throat> happy birthday, Donovan. As a present, I'm voting aye on your bill today. <clears throat> Let's uh, dive deep into our agenda. The Council will vote on the following land use items, an application to rezone the former Parkway Hospital in Council Member Karen Kozlowitz's district. This rezoning will facilitate the rehabilitation of the vacant hospital building with 135 units of uh, housing, 100% which will be senior affordable housing, and it will facilitate the construction of a new 216 unit residential building on the same property. I know this piece of property has been vacant for a long time, and I know that Councilmember Koswitz has been pushing hard for a long time to build senior affordable housing there, so I want to congratulate her on this big day. We're going to be voting on the approval of 809 Atlantic Avenue in Majority Leader Lori Cumbo's district for rezoning and for special permits to facilitate a 29-story mixed-use building with 286 housing units, including permanently affordable housing. We're going to vote on 103 North 13th Street in Councilmember Steve Levin's district, a proposed seven-story mixed building with retail office and required light industrial space. 
We're going to vote at 245 East 53rd Street in Councilmember Keith Powers' district to add a commercial overlay to allow for a new six-story building with a ground floor commercial use. And finally, we're going to vote on the designation of the Park Terrace West, West 217th Street Historic District in Inwood in Councilmember Idanis Rodriguez's district. I know he's worked on this for a long time and it wasn't easy and I want to congratulate him as well on today. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, John Douglas, Jeff Campagna, Brian Paul, Jeff Ewan, and uh, our land use director, Raju Mann. The council will vote on a resolution that amends the rules of the Land Use Committee to clarify and reorganize language that has remained largely unchanged since the Land Use Committee was established in 1990 and to make certain substantive changes to improve the committee's functioning and we'll also be voting on uh, changing committee assignments and creating new committees and eliminating committee. We're going to be voting on that. Moving on, the Council will vote on the following pieces of legislation. The Council will vote on a few bills concerning water tank inspection and safety. New York City has the best drinking water in the country and that is in no small part due to the strong measures we've taken in the past to regulate the eight to 10,000 water tank structures in our city. While our existing laws are strong, the council is committed to ensuring that there are no loopholes or any opportunities to tamper with inspection results when it comes to our drinking water. The bills we're voting on today will further ensure compliance, allowing New Yorkers to continue to feel confident that their water is always safe, clean, and protected. The first bill we're going to vote on is Introduction 1053A, which I sponsored, which would require building owners to ensure that water tank inspection companies submit annual inspection reports directly to the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. Introduction 1056B, sponsored by Councilmember Costa Constantinides, would require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to conduct periodic audits of buildings' annual water tank inspection documentation, and it will require DOHMH to conduct 125 inspections of water tanks selected at random to help ensure the accuracy of the annual inspection reports it receives and requires the Health Department to post the results of such periodic audits and inspections online. Next, we're going to vote on introduction 1138A, sponsored by Councilmember Alika Amprey Samuel, and it will require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to conduct additional reviews of documentation of water tank inspections without providing prior notice to building owners where harmful bacteria are found or where certain violations are identified by the Health Department. This bill would require the Department to post the results of these reviews online. Introduction 1050A, sponsored by Councilmember Ben Kalos would allow the Health Department to require that water tank inspection results be submitted electronically to the Department. Introduction 1057B, sponsored by our Health Committee Chair, Mark Levine, would require that water tank inspectors be either licensed master plumbers, work under the direct and continuing supervision of such licensed master plumber, or be a registered design professional. This bill would also require that the cleaning, painting, and coating of water tanks be conducted by an individual qualified to conduct water tank inspections or by a person who holds a commercial pesticide applicator certification. Introduction 1167A, sponsored by Councilman Rafael Salamanca, would require building owners to repair uh, damage to water tanks or their supporting structures and would impose a civil penalty for the failure to do so. In introduction 1169A, sponsored by Councilman Richie Torres, would require visual evidence of water tanks, such as photographs or videos, to be submitted with inspection results to the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Sarah List, Z. Emanuel Halu, Emily Balkin, and Andrea Vasquez. Next, we're going to vote on a series of bills aimed at protecting individuals on probation and incarcerated individuals. Those next bill, these next bills will provide protections for individuals on probation and folks who are incarcerated. We are at a time where we're trying to remove a lot of barriers to people uh, who are on probation or who are incarcerated, and they face a difficult time being reintegrated into society, so these bills are a very important step. Introduction 1427, sponsored by a real leader on this issue and the chair of our Public Safety Committee, Councilmember Donovan Richards, will prohibit the Department of Probation from requiring marijuana testing unless abstinence from marijuana has been determined to be necessary to lead an otherwise law-abiding life. 
Introduction 944A, sponsored by Councilman Roy Lanceman. Well, he's the chair of our Justice Committee. It will ensure that the Department of Corrections is promptly notifying incarcerated individuals and their attorneys when they are detained solely due to bail set and the amount of less than $10 and then allow them to post it and get released. And introduction 1199A, sponsored by the chair of our Criminal Justice Committee, Keith Powers, would remove the 2% fee on credit card payments made online and the 8% fee charged on credit card payments when paying in person at correctional facilities and improve access to bail payment for individuals and families of limited financial means. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Brian Crow, uh, Alana Sivan, uh, Kishore and Denny, Daniel Adis, uh, and I want to thank them all for their work on this. Finally, the council will vote on gr a grounding bill which would prohibit drug testing for marijuana as a condition for hiring. It is introduction 1445, sponsored by our public advocate, Jumani Williams, who worked on this when he was a member of this body, and it prohibits New York City employers from requiring a prospective employee to be tested for marijuana. Marijuana is now legal in several states and cities across the country. Medical marijuana is legal uh, in our state, and recreational marijuana may soon be legal. New York City employers should not disqualify candidates because of their legal use of marijuana prior to their employment. Drug testing for marijuana is imprecise. False positives can occur up to a month after use and do not necessarily indicate that a person is impaired at the moment of testing. For all of these reasons, I am very happy we are moving this bill today and I support it. I want to thank the staff who worked on this package, Rachel Cordero, Balkis Mirig, Malcolm Butehorn, and Leah Skirpiak. That concludes our agenda for today's stated meeting and I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move into discussion of general orders. First, we have uh, Councilman McCohen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. Uh, with permission, I'd like to vote on all orders on the general order calendar today. Well, Mr. I Granite. Thank you. I vote aye. And Councilman McConstantinidis. Uh, Mr. Public Advocate, with permission, I'd like to vote on all uh, items coupled on the general order and resolution calendar today. Commission Granite. I vote aye. And Councilmember Kalos. New York City water is the best in the world, straight from the tap, and we aim to keep it that way. In school, we learn to drink eight glasses of water a day, and as a New Yorker, it is a point of pride that my eight glasses come straight from the tap. Uh, thanks to groundbreaking reporting by city and state, we learned about the lax oversight of water towers throughout our city. This legislative package will reform that oversight, requiring real inspections and regular cleaning. Uh, introduction 1150A requires electronic reporting of these water towers inspections and cleaning so New Yorkers can see for themselves that the water coming out of their tap is clean. Thank you to Speaker Cor uh, Corey Johnson and Health Chair Mark Levine for getting this done. I urge you to vote aye on 1150A and the entire package so we're going to serve faith in our city's amazing water supply. Uh, thank you, and, and just uh, briefly uh, on my bill, 1445A, I just thank all of the council for putting this up, and I encourage everyone to vote. Uh, this is uh, to take away an artificial barrier to employment. Uh, this testing isn't a deterrent to using marijuana. It's an impediment to opportunity. A Vox report uh, reported that as many as 70 percent of large employers util employers utilize pre-employment drug screenings, encompassing as many as 40 percent of jobs. Uh, if you ingest weed in whatever manner a month ago, I'm not sure how that prevents you from doing your job now. Uh, most employers do not test for alcohol, and we believe that marijuana should at least be at the same level as alcohol. This should not be confused or conflated with saying that you should be allowed to go to work high or otherwise impaired. This does not do that. You should not be going to work drunk and you should not be going to work um, high. This does not make any of those things legal or prevent employers from firing them. Uh, there are some exemptions that were put here and uh, in terms of moving this forward, we always have negotiations. I'd like to revisit some of those as well uh, because I believe uh, no employer should be uh, doing this because it, it is not a matter of safety. It has specifically been a barrier for employment. But I thank everyone who worked on this bill, and I'm looking forward and hoping everyone will vote aye on it. And now last, we have Council Member Yeager. Thank you, Mr. President. It's good to see you up there. Welcome again. Um, I realize this hasn't been spoken yet on this floor today. Uh, I don't know if these comments uh, uh, will encourage a response. They're not intended to, um, but I feel that uh, I think we should have this conversation in public, not in private. 
Um, when we took our oaths of office before promising to faithfully execute the duties of council member, we promised to support the Constitution of the United States. That includes our commitment to the right to free speech. Whether one agrees with the speech or disagrees, the right to free speech is fundamental to our dem democratic society. Like many, I've spoken about this before in this chamber, I too am the child and grandchild of immigrants. And with that background, I've never engaged in disparaging immigrants of any kind from wherever they've come for whatever reason. It's true, I said on Twitter, that Palestine does not exist. It's also true that I repeatedly explained that it was never my point or intent to disparage people or the existence of people, notwithstanding the contrary being disingenuously said about me. But what I said remains a fact. Of course there are Palestinian people, but there is no state of Palestine. That's not merely my opinion, though even if it were, it would still be my right to say so. That's the official position of the United States government in every administration from both parties since the beginning of time. In 15 hearings, over 15 months, totaling 40 hours on the Immigration Committee, there is not a single statement anyone can point to where I have ever disparaged any person, ethnicity, or group in any way, nor on the floor of this council, nor on the steps of this building, nor anywhere else. On the contrary, I've defended and advocated for New York's immigrants. My record on that is clear. But facts play no role in this debate. That's because what I said has been used by those who want my statement to be inaccurate, even though it's not. And those whose rhetoric was far more irresponsible than mine have, through their own words, encouraged threats to my life and to the lives of my staff. Yet, to satisfy some bizarre desire for political correctness run amok, we are here today having this conversation. Mr. President, I'll wrap up in a moment. Appreciate it. Not everyone agrees with everyone. That's what makes democracy so great. Different views can be aired, ought to be aired. We can have the conversation and we can disagree, we can agree. I respect everyone's right to say what they wish. Even when one member of this body just days ago compared the existence of Israel to a biblical plague. I disagree, but I recognize the right to say so. I'm grateful to those who have stood up for free speech over the last few days, today in this chamber, anywhere else they've done so, and I ask that my colleagues think deeply about what this means next Council time. Member, they might say something with others disagree. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Menchaco. Thank you. Uh, I would like to speak on this topic that uh, my, my neighbor uh, is, is talking about. We're voting on some changes, many changes in the committees, uh, including the Immigration Committee, and as chair, I have some words to, dis uh, to speak to here. Uh, we're doing this in the light and in the, in the ecosystem of the federal government and what it's doing every day to disempower and, mar and marginalize, intimidate, dehumanize our immigrant neighbors. The need for empathy, the need for empathy, the need for empathy has never been more obvious and important. This is especially true when we talk with and to and for our immigrant neighbors, and even more so when we legislate on their behalf. We must never forget that many immigrants in our city do not have the power to vote, despite being some of the most engaged civically. I know many colleagues in this chamber who are here because of the incredible volunteer hours put in by the, our immigrant neighbors. What that means for us is that their representation, their and us as their representatives is that we must exercise the highest levels of empathy to overcome the ways in which their lives are made invisible. Otherwise, we undermine the trust immigrants have in our government to act on their behalf and our whole city falls. The Palestinian people have lived for decades under brutal occupation. No one denies that this occupation is happening or that it has caused immense human suffering. Nor does anyone deny that the Palestinian people have the same right to self-determination as people all over the world. What people disagree about is how we get there, and that, of course, is not the purview of this city council. What does matter for this city council is that we have many Palestinian and those of Palestinian descent living in our city, and they, like every other immigrant group, need to know that their council and the Committee on Immigration has and is charged with protecting their rights and their interests. And we recognize that the minimal level that they have that power. And that's why we're referring to them, and that's why referring to them as so-called Palestinians is straightforwardly denying them those interests because that phrase denies of their humanity. Palestinians do exist. Palestine does exist. Along with the denials, uh, it's not innocent geopolitical or geographical assertion. These are phrases historically used to justify violence against Palestinians and other Arab. Uh, people and encourage people to think that Palestinians are not human. 
Council Member, can I ask you to wrap, please? Yeah, I'll finish in my vote. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Van Bremer. Permission, uh, with your permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call ups and coupled items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. I gotta think about it. Thank permission you. granted. Thank you. <laughs> and I believe this is the final. Council Member Barron. Thank you. With permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call ups and all items on the, and the resolutions and all items on the general order calendar. Permission granted. I vote aye on all, uh, with the exception of land use call up. 362 through 365. Thank, you. Thank report, you. Report of special committees? None. Report of standing committees? Report on the Committee on Civil and Human Rights, Introduction 1445A, Pre-Employment Hiring. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Criminal Justice, Introductions 944A and 1199A, Bail Policy. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Health, introductions 1053A through introductions 1169A, water tanks. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, Land Use 356 and Reso 830, Historic District. Uh, coupled on general orders. Land Use 360 and 361, Parkway Hospital. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. Land Use 362 and Reso 831 through Land Use 365 and Reso 834, Atlantic Avenue rezoning. Coupled on general orders. Land Use 367 and Resolution 835 and Land Use Item 368 and Reso 836, 41 Summit Street. Coupled to be filed pursuant to letter of withdrawal. Land use 370 and Reso 837 through land use 372 and resolution 839, 103 North 13th Street. Coupled on general orders. Land use 381 and Reso 840, East 53rd Street rezoning. Uh, coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Public Safety, Introduction 1427, drug testing. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, Preconsidered Resolution 841, amend the rules of the Council. Coupled on general orders. General order calendar, introduction 720, site safety training. Laid over. Land use 360 in Reso 842 and LU 361 in Reso 843, Parkway Hospital. Coupled on general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. A couple of general orders, and at this time, I am asking for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Adams. Permission to explain my vote? Commissioner Granite. Thank you. Council Member Yeager and I began our journey in the New York City Council together last year, and I've always admired his confidence and his conviction and I consider him to be a friend. But as members of this body, we are representatives of not just our constituents, but of all New Yorkers. Our public iterances should reflect care and concern for all New Yorkers. It takes discretion and a bit of restraint to hold this seat. And it is with a heavy heart that I vote aye on all. Words matter, people matter. Ampri Samuel. Ayala. Aye on all. Borelli. Brennan. Aye. Matteo. Uh, Noah, 944, 1199, 1427, 1445, and pre-considered Reso 841, I and the rest. Cabrera. Chin. I and all. Cornegy. Deutsch. Permission to explain my votes? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, my constituents, I'd like to speak on Reso 841. Uh, my constituents did not elect me to police my colleagues about their opinions on foreign policy. They elected me to represent their interests in the city council. Foreign policy is just not something we are always going to agree upon. We come from different places, different ethnicities, and different belief systems. 
We are truly a diverse body, and that diversity must extend to diversity of thought. We are all New Yorkers. We all have strong minds and strong wills. But we must, as a body, learn to be better at agreeing to disagree and without penalizing the minority opinion. We have a lot of work to do in the next few years. We need to maintain the mutual respect that fosters a free and open exchange of ideas so that we can work together for the betterment of all New Yorkers. Finally, I just want to remind my colleagues that social media is a casual setting. It's about impact, not substance, and it's, certain to, it's certainly not the best medium for an in-depth conversation about complicated issues. With that understanding, we should read what we see on Twitter with the informal nature in which it was intended. With the greatest respect for all, I vote no on 841 and vote aye on the rest. Diaz. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm standing out to vote no on the introduction of 1427. That's a drug test, drug testing not permitted for the Department of Probation. When somebody, from someone is put in probation, put in probation, so that person had to prove uh, that they deserve to be, he or she deserve to be uh, given that, 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 that uh, granted that, that position. So I vote no on that. I believe that that's, that's wrong. I believe I vote no on resolution 1427. Now we are taking away the right of business and business people to test uh, for drug of those that they are, 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 have to employ. So that's wrong. And finally, resolution 841, this city council keeps taking away people's right to speak. This city council had to stop. This is a nonsense. The First Amendment said that people had the right uh, freedom of, of, of expression. And when our founding father put that in there, was to allow people to express themselves. Maybe you, we don't have to like what people say. We don't have, maybe we hate what people say. Maybe we feel horrified what people say, but we have to stop trying to quiet people down this body, this body keep doing that and this is wrong. You are violating people's First Amendment. Now, they did it to me, now they did it to Jaeger, and they keep doing it to people. That is wrong, that is wrong, and that is wrong. We all have the First Amendment. We don't have to like it. We don't have to eat it. We don't have to approve it. But we have something called First Amendment, the freedom to spread oppression. And this city council had to stop that. Everybody, I mean, so, so people have to like, people don't have to like what I say. People don't have to like what Jager said. But they have to respect my first amendment. But you keep violating that, violating that, violating that. And then you tell me that there's no power in this house? I'm voting no on, on, on introduction 445A, 1427A, and 841A. I'm voting yes in the rest. Thank you very much. Drum. Aye. Espinel. Eugene. Gibson. Aye on all. Joan Aye. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, this has probably been one of the m most difficult few days for me as I uh, struggled with a decision that would impact me and this body. I want to make it clear that I do not agree with Councilman Member Yeager's comments. I don't get into the, the debate of factual or opinion, but as elected officials, we must strive to present our constituents' interests, especially on, contra on controversial issues, in a way that seeks to bring people together toward a common solution without needlessly inflaming tensions that will only serve to drive them apart. Unfortunately, my friend's recent comments failed that test, but that is my personal opinion. I don't believe 
that we should be censoring or censorship should be a tool that this institution can utilize against the First Amendment right. Well, heck, nothing gets me more wound up and I have very strong personal opinions against the American flag being burned. But we don't take actions against those individuals by stripping them of their jobs, by taking their children out of public schools. We allow them to do so under that First Amendment right, one of which I truly have strong opinions against. My background is one of a people that have been persecuted for centuries under occupation, under the strictest form of communism, where censorship was used as a tool to control people. There's a reason why it's the First Amendment and not the Second. And I'll be voting I with deep reservations as we set protocols moving forward that are going to strip our identity, strip away the ability to speak up on matters that many may not feel comfortable with, but Council it's a member, right that makes this country so up, great. Thank you. It makes this country so great and one that I value. I ask Council Member Yeager to resign to save this body. Council Member, your time's up. I'll come around Thank for you. a second time if I can. I vote Thank you. aye on all. Holden. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I appreciate the leadership and work of my dear friend and colleague, Corey Johnson. He is truly one of the most talented elected officials we've seen in the city of New York for generations. I know he has one of the toughest jobs in the country, and, with, and I have no doubt that is no, there is no one more qualified to govern this body than Speaker Johnson. However, we as council members took an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, which includes free speech. Therefore, I vote aye on all with the exception of pre-considered Reso 841. Grodenchik. I and all with the exception of Resolution 841, which I am abstaining on. Thank you. Kalos. I and all. King. I and all except 841. I'm staying. Ku. I and all. Koslowitz. I and all. Lanceman. I all. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Mission granted. Today's vote is a difficult one. Whatever we do, I fear it will continue a cycle of polarization that does not help us bring about the city or the world that we want. I do not believe that Councilmember Yeager is a bigot. I do not believe he has hate in his heart. When we have disagreed in the past, I have generally found him to be respectful and open to thoughtful debate. Moreover, the hideous anti-Semitic threats of violence that he and his staff have received in recent days are truly abominable. I condemn them without reservation, and I hope the NYPD will pursue enforcement aggressively. At the same time, I believe it is critical that the Council's Immigration Committee be a place where all New Yorkers feel welcome and do not have to worry that their identities will be questioned or erased. In these troubled times, we need to be setting a standard for leadership that does not polarize communities against one another. As a proud Jewish New Yorker, I strongly support Israel's right to exist as a Jewish and democratic state, and I believe it is essential to stand up loud and clear against anti-Semitism on the right, on the left, and in the streets. At the same time, I want Palestinian New Yorkers to know that I deeply value your human rights, your self-determination, and your fundamental worth as human beings equal to mine and that of my family and my people. We must not construct our identities in ways that existentially pit us against each other. And that's why I will be voting in favor of this resolution. I will continue to work and pray for an end to the occupation, which I believe is the only path to peace 
and hopefully someday to reconciliation and mutual understanding. Closer to home, I hope we can find a path away from polarization here in this council, one that enables us to disagree with each other even very sharply, but still in ways that include all New Yorkers and build bridges of understanding here in this chamber and here in our city. That will certainly not happen through battles on Twitter, and it won't happen through votes that remove people from committees either. It'll only happen, it'll require us to do more across sharp lines of difference to find higher ground. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Levin. I vote aye on all. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. So I vote, I vote aye on all. Uh, and I want to continue with a statement and pick up where I left off and reiterate that uh, the work that we do here as a council is one like a family and we listen to each other and I'm really happy that people are speaking out and speaking their voice and speaking their truth to power. Uh, Palestinians do exist and their lives matter and Palestine does exist and the lives of every immigrant group here living in this city will be heard and if we do not hold ourselves to a standard that condemns dehumanizing rhetoric, how can we claim to be standing with immigrants against this country's resurgent white nationalism or the biases and false beliefs about immigrants that underwrite the federal government's deportation machine that we're seeing every day in reports. Our district offices are getting those reports. That's what's happening today. Less urgently, how can we claim to be a committee, an immigration committee, or a body that Palestinians can trust to consider their interests fairly if we are willing to accept language that denies them the grounds for having said interests, namely their existence? This chamber creates opportunities for people to exercise their empathy when called upon. And when such appeals do not succeed, it is on us, it is on us to do the right thing and reassure immigrants in our city that the people who represent their interests might disagree about how to do that, but they will never disagree that they are people with interests to protect. So I respect every member's thoughts and ideas on this chamber and everyone is entitled to their opinions. But I also stand with the BLAC and the Progressive Caucus and the LGBT Caucus and the Women's Caucus that signed a letter denouncing the words of my colleague and to move forward. And so I will be voting aye on all and urge my constituents and my colleagues and everyone in the city to continue to come together and build those bridges of understanding so that we can move forward. There's a lot of work to do here, everyone. Let's do it together. Thank you. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye on all. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. I vote aye on all. Richards. I want to wish my wife a happy anniversary. I was born for her. Oh, and with man. that being said, I vote aye. Nice, nice. <laughs> Rivera. Aye on all. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I believe that the whole world, including our city, has the responsibility to support the two-state solution, the only solution that we have on the table that has been discussed for a number of years a solution that will bring peace to children of Israel and in Palestine. I believe that our city should not have a space for any message of hate, and, I, and with that, I vote aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye and all. Torres. Traeger. Permission to explain my, my vote? Permission granted. I have known Kalman Yeager for many years and consider him to be a friend. He has a long record of public service on behalf of many communities, and I do not believe that he has hateful intentions. 
While my colleague may have believed that his tweets were glib or idle, we have heard from many Palestinian New Yorkers about the harm and hurt his comments have caused them and their children. In 2019, we need to understand and appreciate that our words on social media constitute official communications and will be weighed with concomitant gravity. As a proud Jew, as someone whose parents fled their home in the Soviet Union because they were persecuted because they were Jews, as someone whose family suffered for their identity, as someone who knows the struggle of my people to find a homeland, I cannot accept comments that dispossess thousands of New Yorkers of their identity. There are those who will attempt to frame today's votes as a witness test of one's commitment to Israel and the Jewish people. There are those who will view my vote as a betrayal. I reject this binary. It is possible to embrace Israel without negating the identities of Palestinians or denigrating their desire for a homeland. It is possible to advocate for Israel without engaging in rancor or enmity. Indeed, our coalition is strengthened when we exercise empathy and resist extremes. Ultimately, as elected officials, our legacies are defined by our impact, not our intentions. Our words hold weight. The impact of my colleagues' ill-considered comments has been clear. I respect the deliberations of the speaker's leadership team, and I vote aye. Ulrich. I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 1427, 1445, and I'm voting no on uh, preconsidered reso 841. Uh, my position on that uh, I've already articulated. I believe in civil liberties. I don't agree with what everybody here says all the time, but I do support your right to say it, and I don't like to see anybody's free speech censored in any way. I think that that is um, not what we're supposed to be about. So I vote no on 841, and I on all others. Thank you. Valone. Uh, I on all, but even in today's hearing, there are comments that probably have just offended people. So uh, I ask us to be vigilant in comments that we've just said. I just heard that we're surrounded by white resurgent nationalism. I am not that person. I'm tired of being referred to someone like that. Um, and that's part of the problem with today. You just have to be careful with your words. I would not get myself into that situation. That's the way I was brought up. I agree with what we're doing today. We need to be better responsible with our words because they hurt and we have to be careful. So with that, I say aye and all. Thank you. Jaeger. Mr. President, may I have the excuse to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, sir. Today's election day in Israel. As many as a million Palestinians will cast votes. There have been Palestinian members of the Israeli parliament in every parliament since the foundation of the modern state of Israel. But in Gaza and the West Bank, there are no elections. Today or any day. And that's because the leadership of the Palestinian Authority is an authoritarian regime. The president of the Palestinian Authority is now in the 15th year of his five-year term to which he was originally elected. Gaza is controlled by Hamas, which wages nearly daily attacks on the citizens of Israel, kills political opponents, persecutes gays, subjugates women, and terrorizes journalists who dare challenge their authority. But the problem, of course, is Israel, isn't it? or at least that's what those who challenge my statements would have you believe. When I say there is no Palestinian state, I am not denying the existence of Palestinian people. I've said that before, I'll say it again, of course there are Palestinian people, but there is no Palestinian state. I'm not speaking of people who wish to live their lives peacefully and in harmony, whether in the Middle East, or whether here in New York City, or in my hometown of Brooklyn, but there is no state. And nothing I say, nor any vote we take today, will change that fact. The votes are cast. I'm not going to be silenced. And no one who truly cares about democracy should want me or anyone else in this body or any legislature in this nation to be silenced. I will continue speaking up against anti-Semitism wherever I see it, whether it's in Washington, D.C., or in New York City, or right here on Broadway. I'll speak up about it. I won't be silenced. I will vote aye on all with the exception of intros 1427, 1425, which I believe are silly government overreach. Uh, I vote no on resolution 841. And I vote uh, aye on all. I include intro 1199. I want to briefly just say, Mr. President, uh, I support this bill. I signed on to this bill early on. 
I do believe we could have done better. I don't believe the city of New York or any government should profiteer off bail, and I think we should have made it effective immediately, not in six and 15 months. And with that, uh, I thank you very much, Mr. President, for your indulgence. Thank you. Combo. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Happy to see you up there. Thanks for allowing me. <laughs> Just wanted to recognize there's an African proverb that says, until the story of the hunt is told by the lion, the tale of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. And as an African-American woman, what that essentially means to me is that living in the United States, living in New York City, living in Brooklyn, there's always some entity or body for people of color that define who we are. If we're minorities, if we're the majority, if we're immigrants, if we're native, if we have a homeland, if we don't. And it's all about who is identifying who is who and where they are from. And for me, as an African-American woman, even in New York City, I have to navigate my space and my existence when I walk down the street on the sidewalk, when I get on the train, when I come to work, if I have to go to a doctor's appointment, and every day as my community is being gentrified, it's important for communities of color in particular to feel that their existence still exists. And if we allow this kind of rhetoric and conversation to happen, just like we've seen, communities like Harlem, like Bedford-Stuyvesant will be no more. People will say that those neighborhoods have been replaced by cutesy uh, pronouns or, or adjectives that is soho or boho or ha-ho or all of these different types of names to describe our history and our culture and to erase us. And that's why this is really important to me that we speak up about this particular issue. I represent one of the largest Jewish constituents in New York City, in Crown Heights. And I have stood with my Jewish brothers and colleagues and sisters continuously to fight against hate speech. And it's important that we be consistent, that we fight against hate speech, speech that divides us, speech that could ultimately turn us into a police state where we have to fear airstrikes. Everyone is talking about freedom of speech, but we have to be very clear that this freedom of speech could lead us into a city where we have airstrikes, where people take out their anger and their frustrations with each other through violent means. This is the situation that we're in right now. We're on the heels of people mourning from Christchurch. We're on the heels of people mourning of a shooting that took place in Orlando that have killed over 40, 50 people in prospective shootings. We have to understand that our words have meaning and people are very volatile right now. And it's important that we take responsibility as this body. I feel in conclusion that for me, I'm proud of this body because we fight every day so that everyone knows they have an existence, they have space, that there's enough resources, enough food, enough education for all of us, and that we don't need to fight for each other's existence. God is perfect, and he made a perfect world for us all to live here in peace. And that's what I'm working for, and I hope my colleagues are working towards that every single day. We have to be inclusive, and we cannot support divisive words. I vote aye. Thank you. And council members, if you can stay in the room until the vote is tallied. Espinel. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. All items in today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, with the, with the exception of land use items 362 through 365 and accompany resos, which were adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and zero abstentions, and intro 944A, which was adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and zero abstentions and intro 1199A, which was adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and zero abstentions, and intro 1427, which was adopted by a vote of 40 affirmative, four negative, and zero abstentions, and intro 1444A, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, three in the negative, and zero abstentions.
I have a quick correction. So uh, just to recount, actually, intro 1445A was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, 4 in the negative, and 0 abstentions. And resolution 841, which was adopted by a vote of 35 in the affirmative, 7 in the negative, and 2 abstentions. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills are being referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. There are no resolutions on today's agenda, so we will move into general discussion. We will begin with Council Member Jonai. Please, if you can be quiet, as folks on the right. Council Member Jonai doesn't want to speak. Council Member King. General discussion? Good evening, everyone. I rise today to ask for your support to sign on to an introduction to amend a local law, 1505, and where we're looking to pursue landlords in the city of New York over the last summers. We've had trying times with the use of New Yorkers using the drug called K2 synthetic marijuana. Communities have been destroyed, families turned upside down, and the, resol and the amendment that I'm asking us all to sign on will hold landlords accountable if they are found that their tenants who are retail or selling K2 or manufacturing retail, um, manufacturing K2, as well as giving the community boards notification that they can also revoke the licenses, alcohol licenses and tobacco licenses of these set stores. I'm asking you to sign on because we're looking to save lives, we're looking yeah. to save families, more importantly, we're looking to save communities. And this K2 drug has flipped so many communities from Brooklyn to the Bronx, North, South, and Queens. So I ask you all please to sign on to intro 1505 today. Thank you. Councilmember Kalos. NASCAR is more transparent than politics. You can actually see who's paying for the drivers right on the uh, hood of the car. I've uh, introduced legislation uh, number 1504 uh, that would require people to check off their industry uh, when they give money, and uh, that would actually get mailed to voters in the uh, form of a pie chart in the voter guide and online. There's a number of people sitting in this room, including one very special person who got elected without Hold on, Council Member. If uh, folks can be, be quiet, oh, we're no, still in session. Uh, th there's a number of people in this room, including one special person who got elected without taking any money from one specific industry. And so the idea is voters would get this pie chart, and if they saw too big a slice from an industry they didn't like, for instance, real estate, uh, they might say, you know what, that's not somebody I should vote for. Uh, legislation like this has been around for a little bit. Folks signed a petition with WhiteHouse.gov uh, to uh, require elected officials to wear NASCAR jerseys with those who gave them money. Uh, unfortunately, that wasn't constitutional. This is. I hope to have your support. I don't see any other council members. Um, I'd like to say a few words on, on the topic of the day. Uh, one, I don't envy uh, the speaker on today. Um, in considering the actions to take against any public official, it is important to account for the totality of both the individual in question and the underlying issue at hand, as well as the intention of their actions. First, I always start off by apologizing because I cannot solve the Middle East crisis, and I believe that most of my colleagues here cannot as well, although it seems more and more we are asked to try to do so. Uh, I do not believe in making his comments, because I know Councilmember Yeager very well, uh, that he is a bigot, uh, and I don't believe he had the intention of doing harm. And I say that because, as well as my Palestinian friends who often speak up, I do not believe them to be anti-Semitic. But nor had he considered the unintended and far-reaching consequences of his words, which I do believe discounted an entire group of people who felt attacked and exacerbated the rhetoric around what I call a geopolitical conflict that none of us in New York City government is going to solve. What we do have to make sure, though, is that here in New York City, which I believe has the biggest concentration of um, Jewish and people who support Israel, as well as Palestinians and people who support Palestine, we have to make sure that both of them feel welcomed in this 
country, uh, in this country and in the city. And I'm hopeful that his willingness to engage, engage in inclusivity with respect to all, Councilman Villegas can help heal some of the damage that was caused. However, there should be and has to be consequences for any elected leader on this issue that engages in, and inflames this rhetoric. We have to set a standard and we have to try to stick to it. To the extent that this crisis involves New York City populations, we have to be equitable in the discussions. Up until now, I don't believe we have been. And I think of Mark Lamont Hill, who was by many asked to be fired from CNN from using the words from the river to the sea. And we should listen to the population that was offended to that. Uh, but if Mr. Hill, who was paid to opine, was asked to do that, uh, then someone who is paid to represent everyone should be asked to listen to a population that says saying that Palestine doesn't exist has an effect as them as well. Uh, this body that I was a part of last term voted on something that many also thought was free speech and violated the policy of this body. Uh, and so in that consistency, uh, I support today's actions uh, that were done today in terms of accountability and equitability. Uh, but I'm hoping as we move forward, uh, we realize now we're, we're at a precipice and that if we're not careful, there will be none of us left to serve on committees or chair committees. Uh, so I'm hoping after we've taken the steps, which provides equitability and accountability, that we rethink how we move forward, not only on this issue, uh, but on all issues. And so I thank you for that time, and I hope we all will move forward on equity and standing up against anti-Semitism, as well as Islamophobia and all the other isms and phobias that exist. We will now call on the speaker to close today's meeting. Today's stated meeting of April 9, 2019 is hereby adjourned.